Good afternoon, and many thanks for the organizers in particular, Alan, for inviting me, and uh, other special thanks to Sharon Martha, the development director of this college. I have um, prepared two lectures, uh, one in the shape of uh, an academic PowerPoint, whereas the other one is, is an academic lecture to be read. But as I am a fan of um, sequence and style, I think that both of them would be absolutely inappropriate to read, given the uh, personal accounts that we've just heard. Um, and therefore, probably, uh, uh, as we are uh, in, in, uh, at, a, at a college where it has one of the most substantial archives, and given the fact that I am <coughs> excuse me, um, a fan of combining theory and practice, um, arguing that whilst theory informs practice, practice questions theory. I'd like to be your personal private document today. Um, my name is Makram Khouri Makhoul, and the meaning of Makram is honorable. It's an Arab name. Khouri is priest in Arabic, and Makhoul is the smallest version of Michael. So practically, it'll be honorable uh, Priest Michael standing talking to you now in, in, in English. I grew up in a, in a family or in a house in the oldest uh, port city of Jaffa um, with a huge library, which at the time, in the 40s, before the Palestinian catastrophe, uh, belonged to my grandfather, who was a professor of theology and Arabic and who, as Christian with the name Khouri, uh, was chief inspector working for the uh, British Education uh, Department. And he uh, used to examine uh, Muslim sheikhs, uh, whether their Arabic was proficient enough uh, in order to be uh, sheikhs or imams. But in this library, we had language, books in three languages, Russian, English, and Arabic. Russian, because the Russian church and or the Orthodox Russian church sent its missionaries in the early 19th century to educate those Palestinians or actually Arabs living in the Levant. At, at that time, it was Greater Syria or the, um, the Crescent. Um, to educate these uh, Arabs, um, in, in two seminaries. They established one seminary in Nazareth for men and another seminary in Bejala, just uh, outside Bethlehem in Palestine. So my grandmother studied there uh, at this uh, teacher's seminary and graduated in 1914. And uh, although this part of the family, the part of my uh, mother and grandmother and father were Christian Orthodox, they were very much um, not particularly uh, church goers, despite the fact that my grandfather became the main preacher at the biggest church in, in Jaffa, the Orthodox Church. But moving on from one empire, then of course we had at that time the Ottoman Empire, which was largely Islamic, and the Sultan was practically the caliph uh, of, of that ummah or this territory. And moving on, in 1917, we had the uh, Balfour Declaration on the 2nd of November, which all of a sudden promised um, a land for the Jews in, in Palestine. So the British Empire, and with the, probably the vision of Winston Churchill, or with his help, um, decided that when they saw that some Wahhabi, Salafi, uh, zealous Muslims are coming, marching from Saudi Arabia towards the Levant or greater Syria, it seems that Winston Churchill had uh, quite a good pen and he drew at the time a map where he needed, it seems, to stop uh, these uh, Wahhabi elements from conquering the Levant with its uh, mixed communities. This was obviously part of the uh, activities of the British Empire. But then, once the uh, um, situation deteriorated in Palestine, we reached um, another 
uh, occupation or, or third version of um, uh, another rulers being uh, Israel, we had in our library books in Hebrew. And this is why I became probably uh, the first Arab journalist to write um, for a Hebrew newspaper living in Jaffa, which was at the time, or became a mixed cities with wonderful uh, neighborhood uh, comprising uh, Jewish Arabs from Iraq, Egypt, Morocco, and uh, other Muslim and Christians who lived there. But then it did not last for a long time until I realized that there is a role that the, the media play, which is its contribution, positively or negatively, in the construction of political reality, wherever it is. And it was then my, my role as a, as a very young chap who, who was fluent in Hebrew and who went for his first two, three degrees uh, to study at Tel Aviv University to bridge the gap and to make at least, if not the Israeli government, understand the grievances of the Palestinian citizens of Israel, at least to uh, mediate and make the population understand these religious national uh, differences. But these issues can never be uh, sorted out if religion, any religion, is being used as an agency. And whether it's religion or media or education, all these three institutions are being or have been branded by the likes of, um, uh, of Giddens uh, to be social agencies. And these agencies, whether they are schools or the media organizations, do socialize, at times politicize us. And every meeting is a meeting between brains, and every brain has got at least 10 million cells in it, filled from our uh, childhood with values, norms, and ideologies. And I specifically avoided the use of culture because probably it will be somehow problematic to define it, although perhaps the shortest definition of culture would be the one that was used by Manuel Castell, which is culture is a set of norms and beliefs informing behavior. And if we behave politically in this way or another, then this behavior might shed light not only on our personal or national culture, but also on our ideologies. And myself, as uh, someone who is pretty secular, although ethnically Arab, nationally Palestinian, and someone who was an Israeli citizen for 35 years, and as well as culturally Christian, I do feel that Arabs, Palestinians, and Muslims in particular are grossly misrepresented in the world media. And it does not come by chance. It's an orchestrated campaign which did not start uh, uh, after the 9-11, but before, and just to remind you, with the book by Edward Said covering Islam, talking about the misrepresentation, paternalistic orientalist approach towards anything to do with, with Arabs, Palestine, um, and, and Muslims. So if, in fact, international relations or foreign affairs have got anything to do, it's got really to do with the use of religion for particular purposes. And I'll give you two examples. Um, the first one would be uh, the position, or the lack of it thereof, of the so-called international Christian uh, bodies, states, when it came to the siege over Bethlehem, uh, which was in, in the second intifada after the year 2000. And the second one would be the uh, press representation of uh, the British press uh, when it comes, for example, to uh, the former or the late Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat, which, by the way, today is its ninth uh, anniversary of its funeral. And to give you two examples about the, press, the British press presentation, representation of that case, in 1999, Hillary Clinton visited Gaza. And then Suha Tawil Arafat, uh, Arafat's Palestinian Christian wife, uh, said something about... Uh, uh, the possibility that uh, uh, Jewish settlers uh, may have poisoned the water in Gaza. 
And then uh, the reaction was that the coverage in the British press was absolutely scathing. That was in 1999, and references can be provided. Whereas in 2004, when Arafat was buried, uh, the representation of Suha Arafat was completely different. And there you go, she was described as the white, Christian, female, vulnerable, uh, a fragile woman who is surrounded by these macho, chauvinist, uh, blood-sucking Muslim Palestinian men. These, these examples did not stop there. It stopped as well. It, it does not stop because it continues just to show the position of, uh, I'm not talking about societies, by the way, in Europe. I'm talking about probably the leaders of the position of the leaders or the decision makers in, uh, particularly in uh, Britain, France, and the States towards what's happening in the Arab world. And we'd be absolutely fooling ourselves if we think that they had nothing, that they had anything to do with Christian sentiments or any sentiments to do with Christians in the Middle East. And here are two examples. The numbers of deals that um, were, were not mentioned by uh, uh, my colleague, the former ambassador, um, uh, clearly it seems override arm deals uh, that, that are uh, or have been or are still being conducted between European capitals and, and arms dealers and between um, possibly the most undemocratic regimes in the Arab world are there, are ongoing. It seems that there is no ethics when it comes to economy and, and uh, arms trade. But when it comes to the destruction of whole Christian communities and archaeological sites in the Arab world, including in particular in Syria, we do not hear much about it. In fact, um, it, it is very much so that we hear that those who are, are, are taking decisions in uh, foreign or Western uh, capitals are taking part, in fact, in the extinction of, of Christian Arab heritage in the Arab world, uh, whereas they would like uh, to argue that what is happening, in fact, uh, it's, it's an onslaught or onslaught of by the Wahhabis, whereas these Wahhabis would not have at all uh, been conducting whatever they are doing, in particular now in Syria, without the support of these so-called Christian decision makers in, in the West. So just to, to wrap up, um, yes, there is uh, a hegemonic approach when it comes to the coverage of, of the uh, Western media of any uh, uh, any conflict in, in the Arab world, and it always has been. Nothing changed since Winston Churchill visited Jaffa, my city, in 1921, and when the Palestinian press, in fact, criticized him and boycotted him. And interestingly enough, um, it is known that the national movement, uh, the Palestinian a national movement at the time, at least between 1917 and 1947, just uh, after the, uh, uh, the division of Palestine or the UN resolution in 47, it was led chiefly by Palestinian Christians. And there were those who actually studied at Catholic schools, like myself, or at the Collège de Frères, the French one, the, the French school, or like my mother, studied at the Church of Scotland school in, in Jaffa. But all of these... Arab Christians were actually opposing to the colonial policies, if only because these colonial policies had very little to do with religion, rather with economic uh, interest in the region. Thank you.